zero seconds, and it gets very quiet in here. There you go. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Great, there we go. Okay, great. Uh, why don't you stand with me as we worship the Lord this morning? Nothing can separate, even if I ran away, your love never fails. I know I still make mistakes, but you have new mercies for me every day. Your love never fails. just have a couple quick announcements and we'll get right back into worship. Um, the first is men 
on Friday mornings, this upcoming Friday at 6.30, so more like 5.30 in the morning. Um, there will be men's prayer. Um, this is a great time for you guys to get together and pray for all of your needs, the needs of our country. Um, if you have any questions about that, you could see Pastor or Alan after service. Um, the second thing is, really excited about this. Um, you know, through this past year, we've gone online and we've had a lot of changes in the church, a lot of good changes. And we're looking at a platform, um, it's called onlinechurch.com. And basically, it's for anyone who wants to watch church online that perhaps doesn't do Facebook or doesn't do YouTube. And we're creating this online website um, to minister online. So we are looking for someone who maybe has on their heart to be an online greeter. Um, and basically it would be during the service, you would be online ministering, commenting, talking with those other people who are online watching our services. So without going into full detail on that, if you feel on your heart that this is something that, hey, I might be interested in, after service, see me, and we can talk more about that. And then the last thing is, we are two weeks away from Easter, which is crazy, and um, we are putting together a Seder dinner which will be on March 31st, a Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. And we have a guest coming who is Jewish, and he's going to lead us through the entire Seder dinner and what it means. Um, it's really exciting. Um, so put it on your calendars Wednesday, March 31st at 6 p.m. And there will be more information next week about that. So really exciting stuff. So again, let's stand and get back into worship. Do you not know, have you not heard, my 
don't you just love singing scripture? Isaiah says, they that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. Run and not get weary. Run. Amen. Amen. I'm not weary. say that I am this and I am that. But I am who you say I am. Amen. There's nothing worth more
I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and the dream is undone in your presence is the hunger we all have and I don't know about you but I look back and I think how many times I well, many other things came up empty every time you. so would you just again just close your eyes and reach out to Jesus and say Lord I need more of you more of you more of you. 
Lord, some are hurting this morning, grieving that refilling. So we ask you, every room was reaching out, more of your Holy Spirit. Meet us here. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Are you glad for the Lord this morning? Yeah. What he's going to do through you and in you and for you. Amen. So uh, hug somebody or at least give them an air hug and uh, love on them for a second. And then you can be seated. Good to see you guys. Hey, this is the amen corner over here, you guys. I'm, I'm calling you the amen corner back over here. Good to see all of you sitting over there. Welcome this morning, as Danielle said, and, and Michael. Thank you so much for leading us, you guys. It was wonderful. And uh, yesterday, phenomenal day. Uh, you can see some of the decorations out. There might be a couple pieces of candy left on the table, uh, so help yourself. If uh, you get bored during the sermon, no, I'm kidding, you won't. <laughs> I have to pick on Robbie just a little bit, but he's so good. Thank you, Robbie and Benita, for coming and sharing with us this weekend. Uh, they have a, a little dog, Riley, they've had for 15 years, and, and she's just not doing good. And so how many of you know God loves animals, too? And we just ask you to touch Riley this morning, Jesus. Make her better. Amen. And, uh, you know, that, that's part of our lives. Amen. Our special friends. And so anyway, thank you, New Hope, for generosity, for the way you give sacrificially, regularly, uh, spontaneously at times. But I just want to celebrate that with you this morning because this church has always amazed me in the way you've responded. And through the years, uh, I look back at how many projects we've done, how many things like parking lot, uh, re-roofing the church. Those are big deals. And remodeling in here and on and on and on. And every one of those we paid cash for. And uh, I remember one time I was about ready to order these chairs. And uh, after service, I didn't make a big deal about it, but somebody came up and gave me a check that covered the whole amount of the chairs. And I went, whoa, thank you, God, you know. Because, yeah. uh, you know, I, I just love to see how God wants to bless his church. And that's you. It's not a building, but it's you. But we need to sit in chairs, amen? We need, to, we need to, you know, come somewhere. And so thank God for that. And I just want to tell you that. I'm not trying to get in your wallet with that, but, uh, you know, the fact is you deserve uh, just appreciation. And so this morning, online, thank you for joining us and you here. I uh, just want to celebrate that. But also if you give today, ushers will be at the door on your way out of here. You can go online to tithely.com, and there's uh, different categories there. Missions uh, could be given to a facility improvement, and we've got some projects in line to, to enhance their fellowship hall, children's ministry, whatever you want to call it, area in the back. And uh, we're going to redo the carpet and the walls and the ceiling and all this stuff. So we've got some projects to do. So anyway, with that, uh, thank you. Let me pray for you. Father, even as the government promises rollouts of uh, a lot of money for, for many, many of us. We know that it's not Uncle Sam that supplies our need, it's you. Thank you for sustaining all of us through this past year in just remarkable ways. Thank you for your generosity to us. And of our faithfulness, you promise to rebuke the devourer from us. And for me, Lord, I know that means that my car lasts longer. The washing machine doesn't break. Things like that, practical, where we save money. And I thank you that Israel, their shoes didn't wear out for 40 years. I don't think any of us want to wear 40-year-old shoes, but Lord, thank you for just the provision of God for every one of us. Bless us so we can give more to your kingdom and see the gospel again and again. In Jesus' name, amen.
know you're not here to hear me this morning because Alice and I met Robbie and Benita in 1995, and uh, since then we've, we've been friends. Our kids uh, were friends together, and years go by, but uh, I thank God for the influence. And you know, God brings special people into all of our lives, and aren't you glad for friends who stay true, that you can go to anytime, anywhere, and you can tell them anything, and you know it's safe. And uh, he is one of the safest people. I've ever met, and I'm proud to be his friend. And he tells me often that he loves me, and I believe him. I do. And so uh, yeah. and I love you. So come on up, Robbie, and would you welcome him one more time? Thank you, Jim. I love you. Thank you. Good morning, good morning. Do I look short by this tall table, huh? All right, thank you. By the way, fun being with you today, and fun worshiping the Lord. Um, Usually, Rennell is here. She had a baby that Eleanor, is that right? Gorgeous little girl over there. Anyway, adding to her awesome family, hers and Chris's. But um, fun having Mike Mervine here today. And just Mike, you and Jane are fabulous people. Um, do any of you know the Mervines? Have you met them before this? Some of you do. Anyway, if you know Mike Mervine, you'll know what I mean when I say this, and that is, that was Michael Mervine in action right there, worshiping the Lord. And uh, I'll tell you, there's breakthrough allowed, you know, when, when, uh, when we have somebody who loves Jesus with all their heart, just like Rennell does too. But um, Michael, thank you for coming and joining. Uh, I love you. And I, I want to say something, you might not know this, so I think it's important that I bring something to you that you might not know. Would you like to know that? Okay. I want to tell you a secret about Jim and Allison, but, or really about Jim, and, uh, but I want to say this, it, in a world of unfaithfulness, it's wonderful to have faithful pastors. And Jim and Allison, thank you for the years that you have stood for him in loving God in front of people and loving people in front of the Lord and you've loved us as your friends thank you you are trusted friends of ours um, there are places that I will not go because I don't want the assumption there of the people that I approve of their pastor now does that make sense to you a little bit uh, I want you to know one of the reasons that I'm here is that I would sign my name to Jim and Allison any day of the week for years and years. They are the real deal. They truly care for you. They are, they are pastors. They care about people, and it means something to them to bring the faithful word of God, you know, year in, year out, month in, month out, week in, week out. But thankfully you have today a little bit off at least from the time you're speaking. And, but there's a tension. He doesn't know what I'm going to speak on. And uh, I, could, I could really leave him with a mess today. How's that? Anyway, and who knows where we'll go, but we're going to stay in the Word. And, uh, but at the same time, I, I just, the embracing of Jesus is so important. I don't know about you, but, you know, I, and to be honest with you, and I mean, you said some very nice things about me, Jim, and let me tell you the secret of Jim. Uh, his birthday was yesterday. Did you know that? Yeah, happy birthday, Pastor Jim. Anyway, he's another year older, and he doesn't look a day older to me today over yesterday. I mean, anyway, uh, I, I just, I'm just disgusted that he looks so young compared to me, all right? Anyway, I think I just have more miles on my body or something. You know, he said something, uh, real, I mean, you're kind, he said that, you know, you didn't come here to hear him, but to hear me. Really, reality is probably none of us came to hear a speaker. I come here for the same reason you do. I want Jesus close to me. I seek him, and it's the reason I'm here. I seek the Lord to find him, to love him. And I have set my life that regardless of what I see, regardless of what I hear, and how about in an aging body, regardless of what I feel, 
I will love the Lord more tomorrow than I do today, and I'll love him more today than I did yesterday. Amen? Amen? And may anything that blocks that in your relationship with the Lord, or would block mine as well, that it be removed from our life. Amen? Amen. So with that, with that intention that, that together we want to grow in the Lord. By the way, thank you for playing that drum. I, I'm just kind of amazed you know where to hit it and how to hit it. I mean, <laughs> if I ever played that thing, they'd never ask me to play again. In fact, they'd ask me to stay out of the auditorium. But anyway, turn with me to the book of Jeremiah. And I... This scripture is so alive and real to me in my heart this morning that um, I, I, I'm almost a little fearful that all I'm really doing is, is preaching my message to myself in front of you. How do you like that? You know, it, 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 it's interesting. I, I want to talk to you about, um, I want to talk to you about God's instructions for people going through challenging times. Now, I, I want to I ask you, are any of you in here, and I'm going to ask you to show of hands because I want to know who I want to look at most of the time while I'm speaking, but are, are any of you going through, whether it's for you personally or for someone or because of someone that you care about, are any of you going through a challenging time? I'm going to start over here. Would, I'm going to, anyone over here going through something of a challenge in your life? Okay, anyone? Yes, yeah, some put up both hands, some up. Thank you, thank you. And by the way, thank God for you three that aren't. And, and I always say this. Listen, when you get a little bit older, sometimes you've gone through enough challenging times than not, then challenging times than not, that you forget to enjoy the not. Come on. And I say, when things are going good, yay, double yay. And when things aren't, Lord, thank you for your goodness because your steadfast love is new every morning. And boy, I wore it out yesterday. How about you? Anyway, so the, Jeremiah 29, we're going to look for God's instructions in the middle of challenging times. Let me tell you a little bit about this, and we're, then we're going to read it. This is the scripture that most of us, you probably know by heart, Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Anyway, I, I'm going to read it out of New King James. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Now listen, did any of you ever, were any of you ever raised in a situation where if you did something wrong, wait till your father gets home? <laughs> any of you at least understand that? Lift your hand. By the way, I'm a therapist, so I'm used to talking one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm actually, when I'm with you, I'm looking at you individually. You understand? You're not a group to me. You're an individual, just like you are to the Lord. Anyway, I was thinking, <laughs> if, if someone initially, when I, the day I gave my heart to Jesus, I remember my sister had told me, she said, Robbie, the Lord loves you. I said, if he knows me, he doesn't love me because he knows my life. How many of you understand that a little bit? All right? The exciting part about this is that he knows you by name. In fact, he cares for you so much he counted the hairs on your head. And for some, that's easier than others in this room, all right? But he, he knows you, and he has a good plan for you. Yay! Today, know it in your heart. That's what, that's what Jeremiah is prophesying, the word of the Lord. I know the thoughts I think towards you, the Lord said. I know the thoughts that I have for you. The thoughts that I have for you are good, and they are not evil. If you believe the thoughts that God for you are evil or sometimes, somehow in a way that would be diminishing, you have listened to the wrong God. The God of the Bible, Jehovah God, loves you. And he has plans for you that are good. And some of us ought to say, thank God somebody does. Amen. But especially God, who has been given lordship of my life, who is in charge of me, has plans that are good for my life. 
How many of you needed to know that? Now, here's the problem. <laughs> Some of us think, well, that's nice. But he didn't know, but Robbie didn't even know that I've done some things, that i brought some misery on myself and I deserve all that misery. How many of you ever think like that? Okay, listen to this. This, this, just, this just tickles me, all right? Let it tickle you a little bit. I mean, Michael Mervine already got us going in, in that worship. Thank you, Michael. But I'm gonna read the first part of this chapter and here's what you're gonna find. These people are in exile that he's talking to. They have been, by the hand of the Lord, because they were being foolish and ungodly, the hand of the Lord lifted from them. In fact, he kind of caused them. He even says it's his fault. He caused them to go into captivity. They are under Babylon rule. Some people are there in that situation because of what they did and the consequence that they are bearing out. And it's in this situation that the Lord is saying, I know the plans that I have for you. Yay! So some of you are thinking, well, I deserved it. He's talking to you right here in this scripture. Now listen, there's a couple of us. Have you ever been, I call it being in Jonah's boat. Have you ever been in a situation where you think, I didn't deserve this, but I'm married to somebody who's dragging us all through it. You know. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> Rennell, don't put your hand up. But anyway, <laughs> but, so how do I have you acknowledge that without anyone else around you seeing you? Go like this. Go, go like this you know? <laughs> but, you know, it can be you were in contract with someone, huh? You're in, you signed an agreement with someone. It could be some, a work partner. It could, be, uh, it could be a family member. You're, how many of you have just gone through things that just weren't your doing, but it was somebody else's doing, but you went through it too? Huh? How many of you understand that? This is the work, this is the word that the Lord is wanting to speak to you. All right? He, and so I just say, Lord, just rule over our life. Let us know your plans. Let them be worked out in our life. You want to hear the plans? How many of you want to hear them? You got a little ache for it? All right? I'll talk a little more until you do. Okay. No, I'm kidding you. Jim said I only had 15 more minutes, so that's a miracle. So I'm going to start at verse 4 because a lot of it was already said by something that I shared. But it, it, let's start at verse 4 of Jeremiah 29, New King James Version. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive from whom I have caused to be carried away. He's not afraid of being blamed. From Jerusalem to Babylon. Listen to what he says. Build houses. Would you say build? and dwell in them plant gardens would you say plant and eat their fruit take wives that's for people that are not already married by the way it's not meaning plural or you'll really have a mess you'll really feel like you're in captivity then sorry take wives and beget sons and daughters take wives for your sons give your daughters to husbands so that they may bear sons and daughters that you may be increased there and not diminished. Increased. Would you say increased? increased? There. Where is there? It is in captivity. It's in the challenging time. It's in the time of difficulty. If you believe that there has ever been a time in your life since you have given your heart to the Lord, if you believe that there has ever been a plan of God that would cause you to be diminished, you were wrong. The Lord desires you be increased regardless of the season that you're going through. Now, sometimes the way we would like to define increase is not necessarily the way that God defines increase. Come on. But his increase lasts for all eternity. How many of you just say with me, increase my life? Amen? His plan is that we be increased and not diminished. Then one more word, verse number seven. 
it says this, and seek the peace of the city where I've caused you to be carried away captive and pray for it. I think, pray for it. They're my enemy. <laughs> I don't want to be here. Do any of you get a little whiny and cranky in those situations? Come on. Am I alone on that? Do any of you? you know, anyway, I want revenge. <laughs> no, whoops. Did I say that? <laughs> I better reread verse 7 from the start. <laughs> seek the peace. Would you say seek? And he, it, that's a command, it's a directive. The word there in the Hebrew is actually written in the imperative. That means it is your responsibility directed by God himself to seek the peace of the city where, you, where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it, for in its peace, then you'll find peace. I, I'm gonna read just out of enjoyment a couple more verses. Can I go over a little bit? Thank you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, verse 11, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Verse 12, some of you need to hear this. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me. You, you, when you search for me with all your heart, I will be found by you. Let's stop right there. I want to talk to you about three words. It's the instructions of the Lord in going through challenging times. The first one is this, and it's found in verse 5, and it's the word build. It's an interesting word. It's in the Hebrew, if you're like looking it up, H1129 in the Strong's Concordance, all right? Meant to be funny, but, but listen. It means to make, to build, to rebuild. Now, rebuild means there are times... <clears throat> that it's not something new, but it's something that has diminished and needs to be made like new again. Build, rebuild, form, make something now. And it's that word that would say, I want you to build, but don't wait for tomorrow. You are to build today. The word of the Lord for you is to build. Have something now that you'll occupy in the future. There's something that God has for you tomorrow that you're to start on today. Do you hear me? It's part of the building. It's what he wants to be for you to occupy tomorrow is to be built today. And it's, we'd like to say, well, Lord, I want you to do the building. And he's saying, I'll give you the materials but you're the one that needs to be the one that's building. Tomorrow will benefit from that which you do today. It's a decision. It requires a decision for you. Now, I, I was trying to think if I was in that situation, and I've been in some situations like that, but quite frankly, I've never been taken captive out of my Jerusalem and put in Babylon living with a bunch of strange people. Well, I don't know. I live in L.A. <laughs> you know, listen, all I can say is there's a good reason people live in Shingle Springs. All right? I mean, come, come, stay, come walk around my block with me in, early in the morning. And, well, anyway, I better not say more than that. You live there in the same very house, and that brings me comfort then. You know, hey, Allison turned out all right. Maybe I still will too. All right? But, you know, when you are where you don't want to be there can be some resistance I was thinking and I don't know what your reaction is and some of you might say dear Lord Robbie you're so fleshy I don't know why Pastor Jim would invite you well so he can look better <laughs> all right but uh, I, I was thinking I have the tendency that if I'm in a situation that I don't want to be in, and I'm with a people that I don't want to be in, I want to sit for a while. And if somebody were to say, I want you to build so that you have a tomorrow, my tendency would be to say, you don't understand how irritated I get with these people that I'm having to live with. 
By the way, I'm not talking about your marriage right now. Well, I don't know. Maybe I am. (laughs) But I think, I don't want to be with them. I don't want to live here. By the way, I'm not referring to Shingle Springs. I'm referring to, I don't want to live in this situation I'm in. And yet the Lord is saying in that situation, I know it's a challenge. I know you're there because I've been a part of it. I want you to build because what I have for you, for you to live out the fullness of what I have in your life, you need to begin to build today. And get over your bucking at that situation and begin to build with the finest of build into that situation. So I always think, you know, where am I coasting? What do I need to learn? Listen, I'm going to tell you a story, and then I'll get on to point two and three at some point. (laughs) I've decided to not look at that clock more than once a minute, all right? I'm going to sound like ancient of days to some of you that are younger, but in 2008, our country went through quite a shaking through the economy. How many of you remember that? 2008, 2009. It was a pretty rough time. And Benita and I own a home in Modesto. We call that home. We work and live in Los Angeles most of the time, but we drive back and forth. We've got kids and grandkids that live in Modesto, and thus it's home. You understand that? Okay. In 2008, 2009, the economy was just shaking like some of us had not seen in a while. It's happened before. People call it market corrections, etc. But it caused fear in me. I was a part of a group. There were three of us that had to meet with people and laid off, I don't know, 40, 50 people. It was really a rough time. In my heart, I cried with near every one of those people. It was a very, very difficult thing. What you don't know in certain situations like that is you don't know if they're using you as the one that lays them off and then you're next the following week. And I didn't know that, that I could have been next. But I had a fear that God had an intention of building in my life not building the fear but building something strong in faithfulness where I could depend on the Lord where I had a fear over something that has been in my life since a child my parents divorced when I was very very young I was raised with my mother a couple different stepdads at that time etc I had older siblings I think I was mainly parented by my older siblings My dad was fairly wealthy. He moved away, lived his own life, put his life back together. uh, And to be honest with you, acted like the family of five that he had did not even exist. I'm not picking on him. We are all ungodly and we are living for ourselves. By the way, later on, the rest of the story would be every one of us found Christ in our life and the Lord restored us. He knows how to put people together again. Yay. But there was a fear that was sown very deep in my heart when I was a young teen. And I would remember my mother who barely made enough money, even though she worked full time, to be able to keep the house. And I remember her crying. We used to have, by the way, there used to be these things called telephones. And they had a wire that came out of the wall to a little box and there was a receiver on a little squiggly wire and you'd it would ring and you would answer hello from there all right some of you remember those and it sat on what was called a buffet in our dining room you know that's you couldn't walk around all through the house and through the country with that thing held to your you had to stand right there and I remember do you remember those huh? all right and, and my mother I remember my mother there crying asking the mortgage company if they could wait a few more days for her to get the payment in. It was only $42 a month. Can you imagine a mortgage of $42 a month? It was a different day. And 
she would, please, can you, please, can you wait? And she would cry, get off the phone and cry. And I made a decision back then. And I went and got a job illegally because you needed a work permit back then. I got someone to hire me. And I worked and made our house payment until I went away to college. By that time, my mom had remarried and they could make the payment themselves. But there was a fear that caused me to work even harder. There was a fear, do you understand? And that fear was that I would lose my home and somehow it was so serious that I believed it was almost like life would fall apart as we knew it. Now we're in 08, 09. We're living in Modesto where about one in five homes in a community of 250,000 people, one in five homes went into foreclosure. It was very, very serious. Our home that we'd owned for years, I thought, boy, it will never, the value of being able to sell it will never drop under what we owe on it. Oh, it flew past it. It just dove past it. And I was living in fear every day that I would lose what felt like the basis of life, which was my home. Do you understand? What, how many of you at least kind of understand, at least through empathy? Some of you even for more reason than that. I'm walking up a walkway at House on the Hill behind it, you know, that goes to the back door, Allison, with a friend by the name of Marty. And I, I, he could hear my worry. And I was just like Chicken Little. Have you ever talked like Chicken Little, you know, where the sky's falling? I mean, Marty, I'm going to lose my job next week and I'm going to lose our house the following month and life as I know it will be over, you know. And he stopped me and he said, don't you know that God loves you? And I remember thinking for just a minute, what does God's love for me have to do with what we're talking about? And he referred in his life back to Matthew where the disciples were talking in Matthew 6 towards the end of the chapter, if you want to read it later, where they were worried, what are we going to eat? What are we going to wear? And Jesus says this to them. I care for the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. Don't you know how much more you are of value to me than they? And it was in that season of pressing, in that season of challenge, that God dealt with one of my deepest fears. Now, he's had to deal with a few more since then. Come on. But the building for me was the building of faith. That I needed faith built in my heart because I knew that fear was undermining that place of faith. And I invited the Lord to come in and thought, you know what? I'm going to learn to trust God and let him be the place of the firm foundation in my life. Amen? Build so you have a place to occupy tomorrow. Amen? Let's look at the second word of three words. And Jim, I'll try and make it faster, whatever that means. I think it's meant to comfort you only. <laughs> but it's... it's it says this, it says plant gardens and eat their fruit. Now plant, you plant today so you have food tomorrow. Isn't that right? If you don't plant what is, what is in your issue of life needing to be ingested for tomorrow, you will have a famine tomorrow. You plant today what you want to be able to harvest tomorrow and be able to eat. Come on, isn't that right? I don't know about you, there have been times I didn't plant today. And tomorrow, when I got to my morrow, there was nothing to eat. And guess who we get mad at? Oh, oh God, <laughs> how, how, how could you forsake me? 
Lord, where is the food that you promised? Huh? And he's saying, I told you yesterday, get off your rear. Is that okay that we say that in church? Is that okay? Is that okay? Even in England, is that okay? Huh? Yeah. It, get off your hindquarters. Is that a little more palatable? Anyway, get off your rear and plant. What you want to happen tomorrow, plant today. In fact, realistically, some of the negative that sometimes we reap today was something we inadvertently planted yesterday. Come on. You understand? I want to tell you, I have reaped and sown more of my life with that girl sitting right there. 43 years we've been married. I, it is a long time, but I hope she doesn't have that same exclamation. <laughs> I actually told her, there will not be enough years that I can live and that she can live for me to enjoy her long enough to where I'm totally satisfied. I love that girl. And I enjoy sharing life with her. I enjoy, I'll enjoy the drive home today. Hopefully she's enjoying and enduring while I'm speaking. She happens to think I'm one of the better speakers that she hears. I used to think the best, but then the other day she was trying to figure out whether she watches her typical pastor online or whether she was going to listen to me. I think, really? Because I was speaking from Zoom or whatever it was in my office getting ready to speak. I said, you going to come in? Well, do I have to shut pastor so-and-so off? <laughs> yes. Get in here. No, no, I didn't say that. She actually wrote on their board, I'm having to leave right now. I have to go hear my husband. I'm sorry that I'm leaving the church. <laughs> anyway, but listen, you know, I'm talking about, you know, when you're planting, I, I was thinking, you know, some people think good marriages just happen. And maybe, I mean, I have, I have yet to find the one that just happens. But quite frankly, good marriages are made of thousands of great, but often tough decisions that people are going to love. So what do I want my relationship to look like two years from now? How about next week? But two years from now. You know, and sometimes that means, like, I mean, there's certain things she doesn't like me talking about. So I don't talk about them, like talking about her mother. I mean, there is so much information there to talk about. It, it, you'd be humored just letting me tell a story or two. But I told her on the way here today, I will not talk about your mother. I know you don't like me to, huh? Or did I just? <laughs> she didn't care. We plant. You want love tomorrow? You plant it today. You want forgiveness from other people? You plant forgiveness. You want kindness? You plant kindness. You want somebody to say something nice to you once in a while? You plant saying something nice to somebody else once in a while. You understand? You plant what you want to eat tomorrow. And I don't know about you, but, and by the way, I'm not being risque in saying this. I like going to bed with that gal every night and cuddling with her. And she happens to like cuddling with me. I don't want to go to bed with a porcupine wondering when they're going to fire their quills off at me. You understand? And I don't have to be concerned with that with her. Why? Because there's times I shut my mouth and don't say certain things. And there's times I open my mouth and say other things. And there's times in tough situations where I reassure her, I love you to the moon and back two times over. And she knows we can go through a tough time and still love one another. And then reap the benefit tomorrow. Do you hear what I'm saying? Plant. We plant. I don't want bitterness tomorrow. I want something better. And it's a claim that I have. So if I want a shade tree in the middle of the desert, I need to plant it today that tomorrow I can have some shade. How about you? How many of you need to plant some good things for tomorrow? You already know. All right. 
All right, everybody at that table, nobody over here raised their hands. All right, oh, thank you, thank you, okay. I'm just watching you, I told you, you're individuals to me. Uh, let's talk about one more thing, and that is seek peace. This is really where I wanted to go today, and it's verse seven. Seek the peace of the city where I've caused you to be carried away captive, and pray to the Lord for it, for in its peace, you will have peace. And by the way, that's quite a promise. Seek peace with them so you can enjoy peace with them. I, I have a tendency that if my neighbor is wanting to fight a little bit, I can be riled in my flesh a little bit to give him some of his own stuff. Do any of you, have any of you ever dealt with that? Raise your hand if you have, okay? All right, and I'm actually looking around, looking around still, and I was kind of looking for men versus women, and it's kind of equal in here. So thank you. I'm going to refer to you next week on as a research project we just did. No, but listen to this. When it says seek the peace, seek the peace of the city where I've caused you to be captive, it, it's an action that you and I bear the responsibility of. Seek the peace. You become the seeker. It's like saying this. I, the, I, I'm not God. I, the Lord, am putting a baton in your hand. There are people that you are not at peace with right now. The baton is in your hand that you are to be the person that is to seek the peace with that person. Now, some of us say, I've been waiting for 30 years for them to reach out to me and maybe I'll talk to them nice if they call me back because last time they treated me rudely. It doesn't seem to qualify it in the scripture. Did you notice that? How many of you noticed that? You don't like me here, do you? No, I, come on. I, I noticed it because it's putting it on me. God is directing my life in the middle of challenging times. He's telling me how to win. He's saying, you seek the peace with that person. You know, the peace, seek, you know, the action of making an attempt or a desire to obtain, to achieve peace with that person, to search, to hunt for, to look for, to find to discover, he's saying, seek the peace with those people. Ran across a man probably three months ago, a jewel of a guy. And we were just talking, it was not over the scripture, but something similar. And he said, I haven't talked to any of my five siblings in 30 years. I said, I believe it's the day is today that you seek the peace of your family. What happened? And he told me what happened. And, you know, listen, I can, most of us, if you have some angst with someone, huh? And by the way, I'm not talking about don't have good boundaries, okay? You know, I have, do you have some of those relatives like I have? You love them, but you don't trust them. How many of you have some kin like that, Okay. Some of you don't. <laughs> Come join my family. <laughs> I'll, I'll point out who they are. You, you love them, but you don't trust them. By the way, God isn't saying trust them. He's saying, and he's also not saying, give them your checkbook. He's saying, seek peace. In other words, bring harmony. Love them again. Now, that doesn't mean invite them into your house to steal your jewelry or something. It just means you love them, but have good boundaries. It doesn't mean trust them with your kids. <laughs> Come on, you know what I'm saying? Don't make me say all this stuff. <laughs> you know, it, it, be wise, but seek peace. Seek peace. Find it with them. That's what it's saying. Find a place where there's a place where you can have healthy relationship with them to one degree or another, and that means something with different people. Listen to this. 
peace means freedom from disturbance, no war. <laughs> Does anybody in your past think they're at war with you and you're at war with them? L listen, there are people, I, I want to share a concept that's new to me because it was recently revealed to me. There are people in some of your lives and you have ought against them because they hurt you. Huh? How many of you have some people like that? Okay, yeah. And you have odd against them because they hurt you. What you might not realize is some of them feel hurt by you. Do you hear me? Listen, I'm going to tell you a real story. Is this, this is online, but my 90-year-old stepfather doesn't listen to this. I've had a stepdad for, I mean, he's been around he was around as my mom's boyfriend since I was about five years old. They got married when I was in late high school, early college. I moved out of their house after a year after they got married, and it was a rough day the day I moved out. I had no place to live. I found a place to live. I really believe God gave me a place to live where he had me move in with some atheists. And they all got saved. What do you know? Yay! I thought it was a real bad joke. What are you putting me with these people? I'm a new believer, newly filled with the Holy Spirit, and with all these people that are ungodly. Welcome to my mission field, Robbie. Okay, come on. Come on, have you ever been to a situation? Why me? Because you're salt. And you're light. And maybe God has planted you in your community where you belong. And maybe God has planted you in your family where you belong. And maybe God has planted you in the workplace where you belong. Because he loves them as well as loves you. So I'm sitting down with my now 91-year-old stepfather, but he was 90 at the time. And we have had better talks in his later years as in the last five years than we have ever had in our life. It's been wonderful. I mean, people really can learn to resolve. Do you know that? And I'm sitting there talking to him. We're just enjoying going out to breakfast because he likes being taken out to breakfast and I like taking him out to breakfast. And he brings up something. And he said, listen, there is, uh, there's some, you know, I, I, he said something that told me that he had some hurts towards the rest of the family. I said, do you have some hurts? Yes. I said, like, more than one, he said, oh, I can think of three very hurtful things. I said, tell me about them. And he got a real tight lip. No, nope, I'm not going, I can't, I can't, Robbie, I'm sorry. Okay. Now, by the way, if you knew my life, you'd know I'm a nice guy. How many of you believe that? 99.5% that of the time, I'm a nice guy, all right? I really am. Ask, am I 99.5, huh? Sorry, you have to put up with the other 0.5. <laughs> but I'm a nice guy, and I've been nice to him. I love him. Actually led him to Christ. So we were there having breakfast, and I, after he wouldn't go there with the family issues, I said, have I hurt you at any time in my life? He said, yes. I said, I'd like you to share it with me. Now, by the way, you better be aware if you're ever going to ask somebody that, that you better be a listener. And don't interrupt him. Don't get defensive. Try and understand them because he's telling me his truth. Do you understand? And he shared his life. He shared the hurt. And it was over the day I moved out. And I listened and I asked some clarifying questions that did not, were not defensive at all. And he told me his side of the story. It probably took him 20, 30 minutes. I listened to every word. And before I went to my side of the story, I said, I want to tell you something. I have clearly hurt you, and I'm sorry. What am I doing? I'm living this out. Seek the peace. You, you, me, seek the peace. And I said, after I asked his forgiveness, and he did, I said, there is another side of that story if you'd like to hear it. He said, I would. And I told him 
my side of the story. Not with venom, you understand? But it would have been a time I'd been, I'd worked a job, I was given an opportunity to work at a youth center where I could accrue hours for counseling because you got to have eventually 3,000 hours to apply for state license. And I'd been given a job and I had to open up that youth center at eight and I was taking the whole group out. I was driving a bus. I was taking them out on an outing that was required and there is no backup. And it's 7.15 in the morning, I'm getting ready to leave. I mowed, his, I mowed their lawn yesterday, the day before and he said, the lawnmower, it appears from the grass that the lawnmower is not, needs to be sharpened. I said, yeah, I, I mowed it twice over. It's getting dull, it needs to be sharpened. He said, I need you to take the lawnmower in. I said, I sure will. I said, I could take it even this afternoon. He said, you take it this morning. I said, the lawnmower shop doesn't open until 8 and I have to be at work at 8. He said, I don't care. You take it or else. I said, or else what? He said, or else there's the door. I said, that door will be mine. I'll go through it. And I left that day. He didn't even know where I worked. He didn't even know what my major was. He asked me at 90 years of age, you counsel, don't you? 80,000 hours. He said, did you go to school to be a therapist? Yes, I have a master's. By the way, do you realize this is a relative of mine? Do you understand that? And you might say, well, he should know. Well, he didn't. And I'm not mad at him over it. Do you understand why? I am to be the one that seeks peace. We left that table with him feeling healed and me getting a little healed too. He even said, Robbie, I am so sorry. When I was that age, you know, he's referring to the age he was when I was in college. He said, I was so selfish and so self-centered. I am so sorry. I just was obnoxious. Yeah, you had a little of that going, but it's gone. I love you for who you are today. He said, thank you. Now, I want to share with you, uh, just take me two, three more minutes. <laughs> Is this okay? Are we okay? Do you want two or three more minutes or I'll stop right now? Because I'll stop. Keep going. Okay, listen. In the book of Romans, it says this, that in as much as it's possible with you, Romans 8, be at peace with all men. In the same author that wrote the letter to the Roman church wrote a letter to the Corinth church. And it was his second letter. And he says this, inasmuch as we have been reconciled with God, we have the ministry of, anyone know the next word? Reconciliation or bringing peace. Huh? You, if you are born again, which most of you in this room are, you have the ministry of reconciliation because Jesus reconciled us to God. We get it. In other words, we get that we are loved by God and he has made peace with us. Yay! And his thoughts for us are good and not evil to give you and me a future and not something bad. Yay! But he has said, seek peace. And he means it. Now I want to ask you, because I'm getting ready to close. How many of you have places in your life, maybe people that you'd think, you know what, while you're talking about that, I was kind of thinking, I've got a couple people that, mm, I probably could seek a little peace with them. Anybody? Hmm? Yeah, near everyone. Okay, not everybody, but many, huh? Did you raise your hand? Be nice to me. No, I'm kidding. That girl is the easiest to live with in the world, huh? and thank you for being that way. I want to pray for you, okay? That God just give you, you in fact, listen, I'm not going to ask God to give you the ministry of reconciliation. He's already done it. I'm going to ask that he meet you in your use of the ministry of reconciliation. And also where you've been bucking with people, you stop it. You start to plant what you want tomorrow. You start to build what you want to live in. Amen? And God will meet you there. All right. Did you get something out of this?
other than a sore hiney from sitting there. All right. I want to pray for you. By the way, I love you. It is a great joy to me and Benita to be here with you and to see some of you that I've seen before, to meet new ones like Sister from London. Is it Patty, Pam? Pam, yeah. What a joy she is, huh? Anyway, let me pray for you. Would you bow your head for just a moment? And I'm looking around. I didn't bow my head. But as I'm looking around, I just want to say, are there any of you that you'd say, Robbie, I need to, for me to be that way, I need to make peace with God today because I've been out of sorts with him. Well, today, right now, right in your seat, make a decision. Jesus, I want you in my life and I want to be reconciled with you. So with your head bowed, with you, would you just keep your head bowed for just a minute? If you want just to be reconciled with God right now, you've been on the outs and you want to come home to him, lift your hand. Just say, I want to be reconciled with the Lord. Anybody at all. And then I want to ask you, how many of you would just say, Robbie, I need to forgive some people so I can be a peacemaker with them. How many of you have somebody to forgive today? Lift your hand. Yeah, several. And, and I want you, before we go any further, I want you just to pray with me over that. And I want you to name them by name while I pray. That you, as God has forgiven you, you forgive them. Not because they ask forgiveness, not because they earned it, but because God has forgiven you, so we forgive others. Lord, right now, just right here on this beautiful, nice, cool day in March, right here in Shingle Springs, right here in church, we forgive that person. Name their name. I forgive them. Just say that. I forgive them. They no longer owe me the debt that they owed me. I forgive them of the debt. Just say that. I forgive them of that debt. They no longer owe me. They're forgiven. And then how many of you would just, you'd ask the Lord to help you as you have the ministry of reconciliation, that she, you, he'd show you how to reconcile. He'd meet you there. If that you, lift your hand. You'd have somebody to reconcile with. Lord, I ask you to help them as we would reconcile with people that maybe we've been on the outs from and maybe they caused it or maybe we did. But Lord, would you bring healing and show us how to seek peace because you gave your life that we would be at peace with you. And thank you. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you all. Good to see you. Nice to be here again. Thank you. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the more glory of your goodness. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. The is placed in the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long Oh
Would you say thank you to Robbie and Benita for being with us? Yeah. And I could have listened to you till at least 12. Anyways, thank you for being here, brother. And thank you. And uh, it's so good to be with you this morning. And I hope you got something to take home and begin building and, and planting and all those things. How many of you say, you know, that's good stuff. I need, to, I need to employ that in my life. Amen. Well, hey, Easter's in a couple weeks. We've got some things uh, in store for us and the Seder. And by the way, it's going to be modified a little bit. We're going to have matzo ball soup as a primary dish. Not the whole thing, but uh, you're going to love Jacob Cohen. Jacob uh, is a, a, minister, a missionary to the Jewish people. And uh, it's good. So anyway, plan on being here, and uh, we'll have sign-ups next week for you on that. With that, you're dismissed. God bless you, and we'll see you next Sunday.